Good morning. Please unmute your yeah. One I'm just here to myself. Namaskar. Good morning to all. On behalf of Narangi Anselik Mahavid Dalaya, I welcome our speakers and participants to the international webinar organized by Department of History in collaboration with IPSC of Narangi Anselik Mahavid Myself, Umeshwar Kolita, Assistant Professor of Geography Department and Technical Coordinator of this webinar, feel extremely happy to inform you that two eminent historians present with us who share their ideas and experiences on the topic Unmasking Myths, Legends, and Identities, an Alternative Reading of Ravana. Both the discussion will be a fruitful one and it will be beneficial for all of us. Before the webinar starts, I would like to request our esteemed participants to consider the following. Kindly keep your devices on mute mode during presentation. Kindly don't press presentation button because it will affect both audio and video of all participants. Feedback link will be shared during question and session for half an hour only. Participants are requested in Google and YouTube chat box. Selected question will be discussed during question and answer session. They can ask their sorry. Cooperation from your side is highly solicited. Thank you. Now I request Rita Sonma, ma'am, coordinator IQSC and HOD of education to start the session. Over to you, Rita Sonma. Thank you, Mr. Kolita. Namaskar. And a very good morning to you all. I, Rita Sonma, take the privilege to welcome you all on behalf of IQSC to this international webinar organized by the Department of History in collaboration with IQSC of Narangi Anjali Mohabitali. Today we have with us two eminent personalities, Dr. Rena Lysram Ram of Gaut University and, Dr. and Professor Lal Marvin Dharmasiri from Sri Lanka. This webinar will be inaugurated by our principal, Rita Dr. Hajarika Ma'am. After that, our esteemed guest will be introduced before us by Pritimala Borwa, HOD, Department of History. After the deliberations of our guest, there will be a where our queries will be answered by our revered resource persons. This will be followed by vote of thanks by Junali Talukdar from the Department of History. She will then hand over the webinar to Rita Dr. Hajuri Kamen, principal of our college, to declare the webinar over. So, we sing the webinar a grand success. May I now request Rita Dr. Hajuri Kamen, our principal, to say a few words and inaugurate the webinar. Thank you. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Rita Sharma. Namaskar, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank all of you, our participants, to this fourth international webinar and 13 in series of Narangi Anselik Mahavidyalai. Then I would like to thank Priti Mala Barwa, head of the Department of History, Jonali Talukdar, faculty of History Department, Rita Sharma, coordinator of IQAC, and other IQAC members 
for organizing this knowledge sharing program. It is my privilege to welcome you all, the panelists, attendees, and viewers to this webinar. We are very fortunate to have two distinguished resource persons to share their views with us on unmasking meets legends and identities and alternative reading of Ravana. Unmusito Kohani Kahini, Kingbo Donti Aru, Porisoi, Rabona Reta Bikol Popat. It's a very interesting topic. Initially, I would like to extend my warm welcome to our esteemed resource person, Dr. Reina Leisram, Associate Professor of Department of History, Guwahati University, Assam, India. Welcome, ma'am, to today's webinar. Then I would like to extend my cordial welcome to our second esteemed resource person, who is from legendary kingdom of King Ravana, Swarnalanka of Ramayana, Dr. Dharmasri R. K. Lal Marvin, Senior Professor of Geography, University of Kalenia, Sri Lanka. Sir, I welcome you to this live broadcast international webinar. Now, I would like to extend my humble welcome to my fellow colleagues, my dear students, all participants and viewers from the globe with us to this live transmit. We are very sorry that we could not accommodate all the registered participants in Google Meet. Therefore, maximum number of participants are accessing this event through YouTube. Viewers, please be active in YouTube. I extend my hearty welcome all of you to this experience sharing webinar. I wish all the best to this webinar and uh, hope you will enjoy it. Thank you again. Have a good time. Pritimala, please unmute. Yes. Unmute Thank you, Principal, ma'am, and a very happy morning to you all. I'm indeed honored to have in midst of us two eminent historians to grace today's webinar. I, Priti Mala Borua, head of the Department of History, heartily welcome you all to today's session on behalf of Narangi Anjalik Mahavidale. I take this opportunity to introduce before you our distinguished resource person, Dr. Reina Leisram, a known figure among the notable historians of Northeast India. Dr. Reina Lesra is Associate Professor at the Department of History, Guwahati University, Assam, India. Dr. Reina Lesra, after completion of MA from Delhi University, she was initiated into formal research at the Center for Historical Studies, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. She is the author of three books titled Religion in Early Assam and Archaeological History in 2019. Early Meiti in the History, Religion, Society, and the Manipur Views in 2009, and The Growth and Development of Meiti Nationality, a Historical Approach in 1998. Her research paper titled Empowerment of Women Through Education, the Role of Open and Distance Learning in Northeast India was awarded the UNESCO commissioned paper on the category of New Frontiers in Distance Learning. Les Rump has published widely on religion, culture, and identity in Northeast India, particularly. Assam and Manipur are recipient of fellowships from ICHR, ICSSR, and PCC. She was engaged in research projects on tradition 
and history and women and gender dynamics in Northeast India. Leisram was elected secretary, Oral History Association of India, 2017, and served as associate editor, Journal of History and Culture of the Department of History, Bahati University. At present, she is the guest editor of the book titled Street Groves, Culture and Conservation. I now request Dr. Raina Leisrom to share her invaluable knowledge and experience. Welcome, ma'am, and over to you. Ma'am, please uh, unmute your button here. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Greetings to everyone who has joined to participate in this international webinar on unmasking myths, legends, and identities, and alternative reading of Ravana. At the outset, I take this opportunity to express my thanks to the principal, Narangi Anchali Mahavidyalaya Assam, India, and the esteemed chairperson of the organizing committee, Rita Datta Hazarika, for inviting me as a resource person to deliberate on a very interesting subject of contemporary relevance. My thanks also goes to the esteemed members of the organizing committee, Riti Mala Barua, the head of the Department of History and coordinator of this international webinar. Rita Sharma, IPSC coordinator, Jonali Kalukdar, assistant coordinator, and Omeshwar Polita, technical coordinator. I extend my greetings to respected co-speaker, senior professor LM Dharmasiri of the University of Kalamia, Sri Lanka. My topic for today is titled Myths, Legends, and Constructing Identity. Within the time limit of the webinar, I will attempt to contextualize myths and legends in folklore studies, draw attention to the function of myths and legends, and the politics of representation that is rooted in sociocultural and historical contexts. I will discuss briefly the rich Ramayana folk narratives in Northeast India to exemplify how textualization of tradition can take various forms specific to the history and culture of ethnic groups. The crucial point to note is that the modern meanings which are given to myths and legends impact national discourse and construction of identity of a community. So what are myths and legends? Every known culture has sacred stories of some kind which express their worldview. Since the mid 19th century, the term folklore has been used collectively for verbal compositions, social rituals and sayings that have been handed down solely or at least primarily by word of mouth and rather than in the written form. The tradition is believed to be transmitted over generations by a community rather than conscious individual action. Folk life embraces the full phenomena of traditional culture, including folklore and performing arts. So the major categories of traditional narratives are myths and legends. Myths are stories traditionally considered true and sacred, set in the remote past, in another world, or an earlier stage of this world, whose protagonist is non-human. It focuses on grand events of the past, the creation of the world, the origin of man and of gods, the justification of kingship, etc. Legends, on the other hand, are stories traditionally considered true, but set in the recent past of this world within human history, whose protagonist is a human being rather than supernatural being. Such stories can either be sacred or secular. In distinguishing myths from legends, the crucial feature is that a legend has, of necessity, some historical or topographical connection. Further, the narrative content of a legend is set in a realistic mode. 
Myths and legends are, however, not interchangeable terms, although both are similar in their design and transmission, that is, in telling a story. The Greeks attempted to rationalize mythology in historical terms. Euhemerism is a school of thought which explains that myths may have begun as a series of legends that is based on real stories about humans and historical events. However, such interpretation of myths are not without critics. The categories of myths are ritual myths, which are explaining certain religious practices or patterns and associated with centers of worship, the origin myths or the etiological myths, which describe the beginning of custom, name or object, proving, providing a point of commencement. Creation myths describe the world or the universe when it came into being. Eschatological myths are stories which describe catastrophic ends of the present world order. Social myths reinforce or defend current social values or practices, and trickster myths are those that are associated with tricks or pranks which are played by gods or divine characters. It will be worthwhile to quickly browse through some of the theories of myths. The first scholarly theories of myths appeared around the middle of the 19th century in which the myths were interpreted as primitive counterpart of modern science. For example, E.B. Taylor spoke of the human thought, which evolves through various stages, that is from mythological to scientific ideas. Max Muller called myth a disease of language and speculated that myths arose due to lack of abstract nouns and neuter gender in ancient languages. The anthropologist James Fraser saw myths as a misinterpretation of magical rituals. By pitting myth against science, such theories of the 19th century implied that modern man must abandon myths. However, in the 20th century, the theories of myths that were contributed by various scholars rejected the 19th century theories of opposition uh, of myth and science. The Swiss psychologist Carl Jung argued that all humans share certain inherent unconscious psychological forces, which he called archetypes. Marcel Eliot attributed modern man's anxieties to his rejection of myths and the sense of the sacred. In the 1950s, Roland Barthes published a series of essays examining modern myths and the process of their creation. Levi Strauss, in the structural study of myth, believed that myths reflect patterns in the mind and include a great diversity of human activities such as social rituals, meals that are served, objects dealt with, bodily postures and gestures, etc. Now, historians often argue that folklore material such as myths and legends lack chronological consistency and cohesion. However, Oral narratives are increasingly being used as complementary tool to reconstruct the history of communities, particularly where there is absence of written scripts. Some methods that can be adopted in using such sources effectively include cross-checking of multiple traditions, collaboration of a tradition from printed records, geographical landmarks, material culture, identification of folklore material grafted onto historical settings, knowledge of the informant, etc. There are certain methods, research methods that can be used to study myths and legends. For example, there is a historical geographical method which was developed by Finnish scholars led by Krohn. And this takes into account every known variant of a particular narrative, whether it is in the myth form, legend form, tale, ballad, riddle, etc., and then classifies them according to the place and date of collection. In order to study distribution patterns and reconstruct the narrative, this method dominated the field of research on myths and legends throughout the first half of the 20th century. There is also the contextual performance analysis, which essentially examines the interaction between an individual and the social group. 
The comparative analysis is again very popular method, which involves the study of myths and legends from multiple cultures and attempts to find a common source. Let us now briefly discuss the Ramayana folk tradition in Northeast India. To start with, the legend of Ram is a Sanskrit epic, which all of us know, attributed to Valmiki and which gained immense popularity by the 16th century through the Ram Chattanus of Tulsidas, believed to be an oral tradition, which was put down to writing much later, the legend of Ram came to be narrated in many languages, forms, and cultures. It is believed that there are as many as 300 folk narratives of the Ramayana, extant in India as also in almost all countries of Asia. The Ramayana became popular and manifested itself in text, temple architecture, and performing arts, particularly in India, Indonesia, Thailand, Cambodia, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Laos. It is important to note that geographical locations of all the events which are mentioned in the epic is an enduring mystery, and scholars continue to debate on the historicity or otherwise in identifying these places. Primarily treated as the religious literature of the Vaishnavas, the plural versions of religious sects have been a tool to propagate particular ethics, a situation which is evident from the diverse treatment of the themes. The Buddhists and the Jainas also have their versions of the Ramayana. The significance of the variant versions of the Ramayana lies not just in the literary content, but also the wider context of cultural diffusion and assimilation. The Ramayana is clearly an endorsement of monarchy and the heroes are of the solar line, the Surya Vamsa. The conflict between Rama and Ravana probably reflects an exaggerated version of local conflicts occurring between expanding kingdoms of the Ganga plain and the less sedentary societies of the Vindhyan region. The dichotomy of kingdom and forest is an illustration divided into Brahma and Aranya, that is the settlement areas and the wilderness. The transference of events to a more suddenly location may have been the work of editors of a later period reflecting an expanded geography. The theme of exile represents the migration and settlement of communities in forested areas. The Ramayana is without doubt one of the greatest stories ever told and is part of a revered and celebrated local tradition in Northeast India. The many Ramayanas draw upon locally specific cultural traits which impart to them a distinct character. Situated as it is, Northeast India inevitably formed a link to religious and otherwise between India and Southeast Asia, a factor of some importance in understanding the historical developments. Largely inhabited by Indo Mongoloids, the ethnic groups in Northeast India practice various traditional belief systems, although there is also the presence of Brahmanical influence, Islam, Christianity, and Buddhism, apart from others. The Ramayana is popular mainly among the states uh, of Northeast India, of Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, and Mizoram, which are expressed through literature, dance, drama, songs, etc. In Assam, in the 14th century, Madhava Kandali rendered the Kotha Ramayana in Assamese, which was followed by Giti Ramayana by Durgavara Tayasa in the same century. This was later followed by Shankardeva and Ananda Kandali in the 16th century and Ananda Dasa in the 17th century. Raghunath Mahanta in the 18th century enjoyed the reputation for his prose summary of the epic. A popular folk version of the Ramayana in Assam is the Duliya Bhavna, a dance drama, which is based on themes such as the abduction of Sita. There are also puppet shows and lyrical compositions which are woven around subjects from the epic. Among the many works of the Vaishnava Saint Shankardeva is the Ram Joy, a plot from Balakanda, which was staged at the court of King Nara Narayana. Among the Karbis of the Karbi Amun district of Assam, the Sabin Amun is a folk version of the Ramayana, which is sung in ritualistic tradition. In this narrative, King Janaka works in his Jew farm. Sita carries rice and rice beer to him in a basket slung across her head. 
and guests are served with nut and rice beer. Sita is portrayed as a skilled weaver who was keen to kill the golden deer as its skin would make a good seat material for weaving. Apart from the local flavor, the broad framework of Karbi Ramayana conforms to that of Valmiki. In Manipur, the Maitis who inhabit the valley practiced and are still practicing their traditional religion but came to be influenced by Vaishnavism from around the 15th century. Vaishnavism was declared a state religion by the 18th century and Manipur came to be acquainted with the Sanskrit and Bengali languages. King Garibaniwas wrote an abridged version of Prithibhasa Ramayana. Angon Gopi and Murari composed Virabhabhu Tuba, that is the fall of Virabhabhu, a part of Lanka Kanda. Ram Nogaba is the heavenly journey of Rama and was composed in the 18th century. The popularization of this bhakti tradition has taken various forms in Manipur. The Murang Sion is a legendary ballad with local characters enacting themes from the Ramayana. Variniba is storytelling in which the episodes of Ramayana are narrated for days and nights with creative imagination. Lailik Thiba is singing the slokas in the form of recitation. Lalit Haiba is a scholarly and creative interpretation of the epic. Hongjung Parva is part narration and part singing by female singers. Ram Leelas and Kirtana singing called Bangesh are also part of this popularization of Bhakti in Manipur. In Mizoram, the Mizor tale is an adaptation of the Ramayana story, which is cast in Mizor mold. In Arunachal, Arunachal Pradesh, Rama is a Bodhisattva in the Buddhist version of the Ramayana. Myths and legends, therefore, have emerged as a very significant aspect of reconstructing identities. It has emerged as a key approach to understanding identity-based movements in contemporary societies because of its central focus on the politics of place and space. It may be mentioned that myths of an ethnic group have a way to become intertwined with history and sometimes even overshadowing it. A tradition which is approximated as common to several societies of people may be imaginary and can be an invention. The people at a crucial juncture can invent a tradition from the fragments of history and believe it as a grand discovery of truth about them. The well-known anthropologist Clifford Gertz famously argued decades ago that society is an ensemble of texts, which are in turn ensembles. No text is autonomous or out of or distance from history, language, or discourse. This acknowledges and relies on the notion of intertextuality. Thus, texts are, produ produ they are products of particular social conditions, and thus history has no finished meaning. A particularly influential attempt at analyzing the meaning of myths is Michel Foucault. In his work, The Archaeology of Knowledge, which was published in 1972, he explained that narratives encompass all textual representations of the past or for those they represent. Thus, if one version of the past was more widely accepted than the others, it was only because the exponents had more power than its critics. So textualization of tradition becomes necessary in a society when identity crisis sets in at the instance of an imposing alien culture as the other, voice in a relationship of confrontation with the self that necessitates the construction of one's identity. Tradition ceases to exist when it is no longer critical to society practicing them. Sometimes traditions are abandoned to the detriment of a society's heritage and attempts are made to reclaim identity or to restore a lost or diminished identity. To sum up, myths and legends are best conceived not as a collection of fixed and final stories, but an ongoing and ever-changing process that is expressed in oral and written narratives and which recognizes the diverse ways in which the narratives are received and appropriated. The spectrum of myths and legends are not to be taken literally. 
it involves the study of its text, texture, and context. Indeed, myths and legends are not necessarily a flawless account of any group of people. The central issue is to understand why certain myths or legends were created at certain What was the motivation and how did they come to be transformed into collective beliefs? With this, I conclude my presentation for this international webinar. Thank you so much for the patient hearing. Thank you, ma'am, for your informative and illuminating insight into myth, legends, and identity, and its significance in historical studies and research, and interpreting and understanding Ramayana in depth. I now take the privilege to introduce our distinguished speaker, Professor. Lal Marvin Tharmasiri. <laughs> professor Lal Marvin Tharmasiri, Senior Professor and Chair, University of Kalania, Sri Lanka. Graduating from the Kalania University, he did his MA in Rural Development, SK University, India. He then he then moved to the uh, Agricultural University of Norway and did his PG in Natural Resource and Sustainable Culture and MSc in Natural Resource Management in 1999. He did his PhD in Agricultural Geography from Pune, India in 2009. He adorned many important posts and were chairman of the Central Environmental Authority under the Ministry of Environment, Sri Lanka, and was the director of National Center for Advanced <coughs> Studies under the Ministry of Higher Education, Sri Lanka. He has been engaged in imparting different lectures in universities and has been involved in qualitative qualitative research, curriculum development, e-learning <coughs> procedures, and curriculum designing. He excelled as a public speaker, speaking on different dimensions on various subjects. I now request, I welcome you, sir, and request to give your presentation. Thank you, sir. Okay. Over to you. Good morning, all. Uh, thank you for inviting me for this uh, important international webinar series. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, mention uh, some important characters, uh, those who have invited me for this uh, program, especially uh, uh, Principal Madam, uh, Professor Rita Dutt, and also the coordinators of this program, Professor Preeti Malabrosh. Uh, okay. And the special uh, introduction was given by uh, Professor uh, Rena uh, Laisham, and also uh, the person who is coordinating me and the uh, this college uh, is Professor Lakshmi uh, Gugli. So, uh, and also I am thanking for the all the organizing uh, committee uh, of this program. Uh, thanks all. So, first of all, uh, I have to uh, mention that uh, I am not a historian. Uh, I'm not an anthropologist, uh, I am a geographer. So when uh, I was invited for this uh, uh, webinar, I said that I, I'm not a historian. Uh, then uh, uh, when I uh, talked with uh, uh, Professor Preeti Mala, she suggested that to select any interesting topic uh, which is related to in the Indian Sri Lanka. Finally, uh, I selected this uh, uh, topic and also uh, Professor Rena, I think she has suggested to change the topic also. So I'm thanking her for de uh, developing 
given these ideas to develop these uh, presentations. So uh, before starting uh, my presentation, uh, I would like to show some small video clips. Uh, it is in Sinhala, but it doesn't matter. But some uh, something you can understand, I think. Uh, I think I need uh, technical support. Uh, can you see this, uh, the picture? No, sir. No, sir, it's not visible. Uh, I'm trying to... Uh, what about now? Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is coming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just just uh, look at this. Uh, one minute. Yeah. <coughs> so you don't know about uh, the language. It is uh, uh, seen as uh, Singhala. They're talking about the special mountain. It's called Pitigala. Some people believe that the King Ravana's dead body was keeping that particular mountain. And also his friends, Kumbhakarna's body also was there. This is not popular in Sri Lanka, but this is very popular in Sri Lanka, India. Recent Indian team cast came to Sri Lanka and said, there is no sound we can't hear yeah okay now all right uh, perhaps you have seen this uh, small video clip right now uh, shall i uh, start my uh, presentation uh, is it visible on my presentation? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. Yeah, my presentation does not come. Yeah, once. No. No, it doesn't come. So I will try once again. Is it coming? Not and yet, sir. No, sir. One minute. Now, how is that? Yes, sir. Now okay. it is coming. It's coming now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. <clears throat> so my theme is, my topic is unmasking myth, legends, and identity, and alternative readings of King Ravana. So this picture is very familiar for you, I think. So uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, the story is not much popular, but uh, nowadays it has been uh, widely talking about uh, Ravana. Uh, because uh, um, in Sri Lanka, the number of Hindu populations are very low. Most of them are Buddhist. Others, Christians and Muslims live in Sri Lanka. So uh, in that respect, 
so uh, i will i will tell something uh, about uh, the story uh, from sri lanka you see <clears throat> uh, so when we are talking about this uh, previously uh, professor uh, rena uh, laisham also uh, mentioning about the myth uh, and uh, some uh, legends about the and very important factors so folk tales all the stories are based on the folk tales folk tales of different cultures have an important place in the field of uh, maybe history maybe social science and cultural geography also by stimulating curiosity about other cultures folk tales can help the people to appreciate the reality of human diversity and also simultaneously the common elements in folk tales may serve to increase the people's understanding of different mm -hmm. culture and their surroundings uh, from time to time uh, storytellers have created uh, tales to be shared by the uh, member of the community uh, some purely for the entertainment uh, and other use to transmit the society's customs attitudes Uh, values and even uh, philosophy of the life of new generation so i don't uh, uh, express many things about the <clears throat> uh, folk tales because already professor arena has explained about uh, it and also uh, when you are searching the king uh, ravana story there are three types of uh, interpretation uh, uh, based on different sources so the first one the uh, mp kibed uh, so uh, he he has uh, written about uh, no sorry i'll go back to the previous one yeah uh, so there are three types of uh, uh, interpretation based on the, the story the first one is already you know about valmiki ramayana yeah? the second one is folk literature and the third one critical examination of literature sources along with the archaeological and field studies in this study in this presentation i will not pay much attention about the describing ramayana but talk more about the other factors uh, prana pb singh the professor of cultural geography benares university so has written about the rama's route of the banishment a geographical view point so it's attempted to identify the possible route of rama from ayodhya to sri lanka so the thick black line showing the uh, possible routes from ayodhya to uh, sri lanka now uh, we <coughs> now sri lanka previously uh, it was called lanka lankapura uh, there are some uh, controversial uh, ideas on the location of lankapura or sri lanka so as uh, professor kibe mentions uh, the the uh, he has written about a very important uh, article about the uh, lanka of the ramayana the problems locations so it says the knowledge of geography possessed by the authors of the original story of ramayana did not extend much more than 200 miles in the direction of the south and a little more in the west up from ayodhya and about 100 miles in the remaining two directions so accordingly the lankapura should be in india the second one the some archaeologists have even traced ramana's lanka to modern day of orissa so this is somewhat interrelated to the first and second one the third one mahinda uh, palavitarana he was in sri lanka uh, he mentioned that we must not look at for geographical or historical accuracy in these uh, descriptions because of this uh, confusion so uh, objectives of this uh, study so major objective of this study uh, is to identify the myth and identities with similarities to and differences from the contemporary indian situation along with the appropriation from the ravana as a singular buddhist cultural hero 
So that is I am highlighting the singular Buddhist cultural hero by the view of cultural and geographical aspects. And also, in addition, I'll pay my attention to identify the places, okay. Identify the places in Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka Pura, where important in related to the epic in the real situation. So this uh, this picture may be very familiar uh, for you. This is a South Indian uh, painting. So uh, according to Valmiki's Ramayana, the great epic, the King Ravana was one of the mighty power over gods, human and villain or demon. However, the Sri Lankan folk tales reveals totally different picture of Rama, Ravana. Patmeshwaran uh, is another scholar who has uh, written about the Ravana. Uh, has, uh, he has uh, published an article on reclaiming Ravana and Sri Lanka. Ravana's Singhala Buddhist hypothesis of the Tamil response. He mentioned that Ravana is as a Singhala Buddhist cultural hero, as I mentioned earlier, in the context of the 21st century post for Sri Lanka. You know, we had 30 years long war between the LTT and the uh, Sri Lankan government forces. It was ended in 2019, 2009. So after that, the legend uh, has been uh, rewriting. I, I hope so. And the Dilip Vitarana, Dilipa Vitarana is another Sri Lankan, has written about uh, another article on Ravana Sri Lanka, redefined the singular nations, mentioned that the Sinhalese were considered the descendants of Aryan Prince Vijay, who arrived on the island around the 2,500 years ago. This new narrative identifies the Yak, King Ravana, as the originator of the Singhala nation by going further back into the past. So this is the new changing uh, system of uh, the ideology. So you may have seen this uh, new picture. So this is the Sri Lankan picture. So how you uh, can uh, compare, the, can you compare this, uh, this uh, Ravana, the South Indian painting and Sri Lankan painting? So how it is it, it, it's, it's changing. Ravana means, Ra means uh, sun, uh, Vana means uh, Varna or four colors, that is, uh, it uh, means uh, Brahma, Shastri, Vaishya, Sudra maybe. And uh, so he was uh, uh, lived in Sri Lanka in uh, 2554 to 2517 before the common era. Uh, accordingly, uh, according to Rajavali, uh, historical uh, uh, narratives of the singular king. The King Ramana uh, was in Sri Lanka about uh, uh, 1844 uh, years before the uh, Lord Buddha. Uh, and uh, a famous Western, uh, Western scholar, Sir William Jones, has found uh, through his studies that King Ravana lived uh, about uh, 867 uh, years uh, BC, uh, but there is no any reasonable or uh, archaeological evidence uh, to uh, prove the uh, facts. So even though the uh, South Indian paintings uh, shows the appearance of Kim Ravana was a very uh, fearsome villain or demon uh, because uh, the Ravana has 10 heads, 20 hands uh, and 320 teeth and also he, uh, 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 he, uh, he has a, a big sword uh, and also uh, he uh, look unpleasant with the upper thick black rounded uh, moustache and also. But uh, you see here, this is completely different picture, shows this uh, picture. So uh, according to Sri Lankan folk tales, uh, Ramana had the uh, asylum of yogic exercise and knowledge of 10 languages. 
So that is important. He followed the yogic exercise for a long period of 10,000 years. Further, the Ramayana says that the King Ravana has dasas, ten heads. It was explained the, here as the king of ten kingdoms and ten special skills such as arts, science, dance, astrology, astronomy, administration, poetry, music, black magic, and medicine. So that is the difference. So here, ten kingdoms and ten special skills. So that's the thing he had. So this picture says the Sri Lanka and India. So the people, you are from Assam, so you may not be uh, familiar with Sri Lanka and surrounding. So I put this map to show uh, the locations. So uh, as you know, the Sri Lanka is an island. So I put some uh, uh, statistics, but this is not related to my presentation, but this is just for uh, knowing the uh, both countries. So Assam is more, more or less uh, like Sri Lanka. So uh, area is more or less similar. 65,000 square kilometers in US, 78,000 kilometers. Population also uh, not much difference and population density. Also, uh, there are some similarities. But per capita income, uh, human development index and literacy has some differences. Okay. Uh, and this is uh, Uh, let's go back to my presentation once again. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, let's uh, have a look at the geographical locations of India uh, and India uh, in Sri Lanka. Uh, especially uh, proved that uh, India and Sri Lanka had been consolidated as a part of one continent called Gondwana land during the Triassic period, which gradually through the southern hemisphere. So it floated from uh, south to north. It was taken many, many thousand years in the history to break the break away Sri Lanka from the Indian mainland. However, now we are in the Sri Lanka separated from a marine stripe called Oak Street, of which na narrowest width is about 24 kilometers. Uh, this narrow geographical divide has become the root of the study, the common ground in terms of social, cultural, and religious heritage between India and Sri Lanka. So, <clears throat> so this is the very uh, narrow uh, street that's called Pope, Pope Streets. Uh, the the, uh, the chain of the island and the coral reef stretch across the uh, southern end of the state, uh, most, of, most often called Adam's Bridge. This uh, feature is called so-called uh, uh, Bridge of Ravana. And this is a satellite picture, uh, shows the uh, that uh, bridge. So, according to sacred uh, to the Hindu religions, the bridge was said to be built by Rama, who visited many towns in the region. The, the shallows are primarily limestone, and waters in the location are quite shallow. The, some data suggest that the bridge may be uh, remittent of the true land bridge uh, that once stretched between the India and Sri Lanka. So, however. Uh, Uh, let's let's have a look at the uh, King Ravana family tree now. So uh, Ravana's uh, father, he was Pushpotu uh, Kaikashi, uh, and Vishwam uh, uh, and mother was Somali and Vishwaras. So uh, Ravana has five uh, uh, brother, uh, two daughters and uh, two uh, sisters and uh, uh, another two brothers. 
സുദേനെ കുംഭകർണോ കുംഭവ്രാവണ and uh, they had a king its name is the indrajit and uh, maya his uh, uh, mandro is his uh, father so uh, historical uh, evidence prove that the earliest human remains uh, found uh, in sri lanka island of sri lanka date about 1200 1000 years ago 1250 Uh, 125,000 years ago, that is called Balangodam Man, Balangodam Manavaya. So the period could be identified as a Mesolithic, an area where hunters, gatherers, live in caves. So the legend uh, event of Ramana might, be, uh, might have been before the Pentagon period. according to the legend the ravana lived in 2554 to 2517 bce then the question arises how the people could have built kingdom at that time so that is the main issue come come this one so this uh, painting actually this is a painting and it's about uh, uh sigiriya perhaps you have heard about this uh, very important place uh, so uh, it was uh, found that the king kashyapa according to our mahavansa our uh, history uh, the fortress was built by king uh, kashyapa uh, so he built sigiriya uh, during the rule in 4 477 to 495 ad many people who are supporting the legend says that the sigiriya kingdom was originally built by king ravana but later it has been rebuilt by king kashyap it might be a big myth according to historical records the first sri lankan ruler of the anuradhapura kingdom king is uh, recorded for the fourth uh, centuries uh, bce so several kings Uh, also had been ruled the country afterwards uh, so after the uh, the king's rules the british uh, especially european came to sri lanka in 19 uh, in 1505 the portuguese invaded the country and they had been ruled some part of the country then dutch came then british came and they captured some part of the country and they ruled especially british uh, they have uh, control over the country so uh, historical evidence shows that there was scattered uh, low population in the area because we in the british era the british people wanted to uh, cultivate uh, the uh, hill country so this is the uh, uh, picture of the sri lanka and the uh hilly area is shown in the dark dark line so uh, the area was very uh, less uh, populated at that time uh, so british wanted to cultivate the tea rubber uh, tea coffee and other plantations uh, so they wanted to uh, labors then uh, uh, south indian tamils migrated to the uh, hill area so indian tamils uh of sri lanka are tamil people of indian origin especially from the south india and they are mostly descend from the workers uh, sent from south india sri lanka uh, in the 19th to 20th centuries to work in the coffee tea plantation so in general uh, they were in hindu beliefs that guide their day to day lives there are a number of temples and places workshops on the states and in villages town other places in sri lanka to which they have migrated so uh, if you look at the places where they have migrated have some very important uh, places which are uh, related to uh, ramayana legends so most of the places located in the red cycle area so uh, this is about the uh, Uh, the previous i have told you about the rama's roots sri lanka it start from ayodhya to uh, 
uh, here uh, so according to this uh, uh, according to the legend uh, so uh, the rama and other team uh, came to uh, this route and they follow these routes and these uh, places could be identified at the very important uh, places uh, let's see the places uh, what is the importance of the places uh, this is a uh, manavari temple the people believe that uh, the lord rama uh, is sort of uh, uh, lingam at that uh, temple this is munasharan uh, temple it's very famous temple in sri lanka uh, people believe that the lord rama prays in the lord shiva and this is a lankana mountain area uh, especially uh, hindu people believe that they are king ravana meditated and this is yahangal a special type of uh, uh, rock uh, it is uh, yahang means uh, uh, bed uh, gala means rock uh, then uh, sleeping uh, the rock look like uh, a sleeping bed so <clears throat> believes people believe that we are the king's uh, body was kept after his uh, death <clears throat> sorry and also <clears throat> this is uh, alugal lena it's called ash <clears throat> ash cave uh, where uh, Ravana's body was uh, uh, no the, the, the thousands of uh, dead uh, Ravana's soldiers burns, uh, and this is Pokmale uh, where Sita Devi uh, prepared a rice bowl for Ravana, and this is Sita uh, Amman temple where Sita was held uh, uh, captive by the Ravana, so. Uh, so one uh, so you will see some uh, pot uh, holes this is called pot hole in geography so these are the evidence uh, the hindus believe that uh, this uh, evidence uh, shows the uh, story uh, proving the story of the uh, king ravana so now uh, people uh, constructed the temple that is a sitaman temple uh, on this uh, particular place so this is the Sitampan temple in Aurelia. And also Sita Kotua, uh, where uh, Sita Devi was uh, in person. And uh, this uh, Ravana cave, so I will uh, show some, uh, uh, some uh, video clips uh, after my presentations. Uh, it's about the Ravana cave. Uh, and this is uh, the Umu Vida. Uh, the uh, according to legend, the uh, Rama killed the Ravana uh, in this place. So actually, uh, we call Dunu Vida, uh, where it is a, a certain geographical uh, landforms of the uh, river erosions systems. Uh, and also, this is. Uh, Everybody knows about the Ravana waterfall. It's a world famous place, uh, Ravana waterfalls. Uh, even the hundreds of thousands of people are visiting this place every year. Uh, in addition, there are uh, three major uh, mountains uh, where humans, uh, Hanumans, accidentally drop a piece of uh, Himalaya. Uh, when he brought a piece of land from Himalaya. So he, people believe that, that uh, he dropped some uh, piece of land in the three places. One is Ritigala mountain, the second one the Dulukanda, and third one is uh, Umasala. Uh, at present, uh, there are very high uh, biodiversity uh, available in that area. This is the Dulukanda mountain. This is also Dulukanda from other angle. So this is a reticular. This is a reticular mountain. This is a Rumasala. So Rumasala, it is uh, near to uh, down south, the tip of the down south. 
so very beautiful places uh, so you can see the buddhist temple is located there now so <clears throat> this is another important uh, uh, things uh, important icon of the uh, legend it is the flying helicopter of the uh, ravana so uh, dr surya gunasekar um, he was uh, written a uh, book about uh, ravana sistacharya uh, uh, not ravana sistacharya uh, uh, historic historical ravana so um, that says that the ravana had the airplane powered by a mercury vortex engine mercury vortex engine we had such a technology in those days according to the legend so this is another painting from a temple uh, found uh, recently yeah it's how it's uh, uh, done on the uh, 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 so another uh, that there's a, uh, another important uh, icon as I told you only of that legend. Uh, however, until the recent unconnected with Ravana, uh, innovating flying uh, wooden uh, peacock, uh, usually associated with the stories uh, in which uh, the father of Ravana built the uh, machine, uh, bird using uh, the uh, the machine to travel the distance uh, kingdom uh, to capture the uh, Sita. So uh, uh, this uh, picture, the, the, the person is on this uh, picture is uh, Director General of the Department of Archaeology, uh, Dr. Uh, Senrat Disanayaka. Uh, so uh, when he talking about the Ravana legends, uh, Dr. Uh, Disanayak is saying that uh, he categorically denied that there is neither archaeological evidence, no provable fact to accept the legend as it is. However, still the debate is going on between the pro and anti parties who support the legend and don't support. So as I uh, told you earlier, uh, the Indian migrate people came to Sri Lanka and lived in up country. Then they have founded some important places, maybe caves, maybe mountains, maybe uh, maybe uh, waterfalls, or some other places. Then they might have think about this is the place where they have heard from the Valmiki Ramayana. So uh, it might be. We don't know. The Sandrat uh, Disanayak, he is uh, categorically denying these stories. And uh, you can obtain this video on YouTube. Unfortunately, it is in Singhala. So this will be debatable. Some people are uh, arguing this is a foolish uh, uh, speech. So uh, this is wrong speech like this. So uh, in my conclusions, so uh, in a uh, point of view uh, of cultural geography, uh, folk tales uh, could be identified as a brilliant resources uh, for revealing uh, traditional values, norms, and life study of the culture, either uh, another culture or uh, one's own. Uh, and also, uh, folk tales could be uh, enriched. Uh, the study of uh, any society's past and its culture. Sometimes it could be identified as myth. Uh, it should not be bothering to find uh, bothering to find the exact place of the location Lanka for only I mentioned about that. Lack of details and evidence found from the different sources a confidently one could not decide the final decision of Ravana the King Lankapura is a myth. So that is the important point that I am pointing out. Multidisciplinary research, multidisciplinary research, I mean that for anthropology, history, geography, and uh, other interesting uh, subjects, uh, uh, peoples also 
uh, should have uh, joined and explore the origin of the relationship of the names of the places and historical values of such places, irrespective of the evidence of King Ravana. It would be much appropriate to develop a cultural tourism uh, between the Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, which uh, benefited for both countries. And also, worth watching to visit Sri Lanka and see the ancient cultural heritage, important sites, and natural beauty with the inaugurations of legends. So these are the, uh, these are the uh, uh, sources, references, uh, that I have uh, referred for this my presentation. In addition, so I have referred some singular uh, Ravana books which are written on Ravana. So these are the uh, books which I have referred for this presentation. So finally, I would like to say that uh, someone can say that Ravana is uh, far from the reality. It's far from the reality, but it is necessary to have a look into the culture and society as seem to be prevailed in deep through the just facts behind the myth of Ravana, appreciating as a legendary heritage. Appreciating as a legend heritage. Thank you. And also, uh, I have another video clip. Uh, so let me allow to show that video clip. One minute. So I will share again. I don't know whether you can see. Yes, sir. Now the people, people are, uh, people are searching the Ravana scale. Uh, this is the uh, cave of the Ravana. So uh, according to legend, uh, this is the place where uh, Sita was uh, kept. So these people are searching this area. This is in Aurelia. It's a very big cave. This is another uh, pictures of the uh, other side of the cave. But there is no any archaeological evidence except the stones. Uh, I think uh, you have uh, got some points uh, from uh, my presentations and uh, so 
Once again, I'm inviting you to visit uh, Sri Lanka to see these important places. Uh, so thank you once again. Thank you, sir, for your alternative findings and readings on Ramayana and Rama. We appreciate your enjoyable and interesting journey that you took us to the land of Ravana. Thank you, sir, once again. Now I want to go to the next uh, move to the question answer session and the interaction with the students uh, we have gone through the chat box and the, we have found a number of questions uh, that the, the students want to ask you live and uh, so i would like to ask uh, uh, Sainda Rani. Uh, are you there Sainda Rani? yes ma'am yes so you can put your questions uh, to our esteemed resource persons. Yeah. Uh, respected resource person, I am Sintarani Senapati, student of BS6M Narangan Chalik Mahavid Dale. My question is to Lestram, ma'am. How far myths, legend, and other oral tradition authentic as source for historical studies and research? Thank you, Sandhya, for your very relevant uh, question. Uh, I think I have addressed uh, this issue about how, uh, you know, historians generally uh, always seem to have problems in terms of uh, chronology and cohesion of the narratives, which we find in myths and legends. But I have also stated that uh, if you look at uh, communities uh, which do not have a script of their own, where one has to rely on the oral traditions in reconstructing history uh, or understanding their culture and society, myths and legends are essentially the fundamental base or the sources which have to be used in reconstructing their identity and history. So I have essentially also address some of the issues like the research methods that can be used, how you can approach understanding these oral narratives. And one of the very good uh, ways of understanding them is to look at multiple traditions to try and verify to an extent possible by even using archaeology uh, as one of the uh, say supplementary uh, tools and techniques to study. So uh, it is definitely, uh, you know, a very important issue that you have raised. But nowadays, it is considered a complementary tool uh, for writing the histories, particularly of communities that don't have a script. So uh, there lies the importance of myths and legends. I hope I have answered to an extent of what you wanted to uh, hear. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, ma'am. And thank you, Sandra. Uh, I have another question uh, from Dimpi. Uh, Dimpi, are you there? Dimpi, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Respected resource person, I am Dinshi Barman, U.S. semester student, and I am from Narendra And my question is to uh, Ramasiri sir. Sir, is Ramayana a mythology? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, as I told you earlier, in Sri Lanka, uh, more than 70% people are Buddhist. So, uh, the Buddhist people actually, uh, they believe or don't, uh, don't follow the, uh, the Ramayana 
uh, Valmiki's Ramayana story because uh, uh, because uh, because they think it is a myth. Uh, but uh, the Hindus uh, believe this is the true story. So the debate is going on. You know, uh, after the uh, after the war between the LDT, uh, now uh, the legend has been rewriting. So people are paying much more attention to the new story about the Rama. So it's going on, but uh, we do not have uh, written evidence. We don't have archaeological evidence, and so on. So under this circumstance. Uh, we believe, we respect, it is as a great event. Thank you for your valuable information, sir. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dimpi, for your question. Uh, I now uh, ask uh, Junali Talukdar, uh, Assistant Professor of the Department Department of History to carry forward the question answer session. Over to you, Junali. Junali, unmute yourself. Good afternoon, Mrs. Parson. Uh, the chat box is full of so many questions and queries. Uh, one question is uh, to Lestra Man, uh, asked by Juri Sharma. Uh, the question is, um, so many evidence why still in the minds of youth about uh, Ramayana, um, the existence of uh, Ramayana is still so controversial if it is a myth or actual truth. Ma'am? Yes. Uh, so thank you so much for the question. And uh, in fact, this is a very uh, common and uh, a very popular question, I must say, uh, because uh, like any student of history or any uh, individual who is uh, who is interested in uh, this area of study or, and also for general knowledge, uh, we are still always very confused, uh, you know, whether uh, Ram uh, actually lived uh, in Ayodhya or whether Ravan actually stayed in uh, Sri Lanka and the whole narrative of uh, the Ramayana. Uh, that is why when myths and legends are being studied and when there is a critical analysis of these oral narratives, uh, these scholars have essentially tried to study in the cultural context and they always say that the historical context, the cultural context has to be studied, has to be understood in order to uh, find out why certain myths have been created and who created them, why it was created. And in these questions and the answers that one try to find, we'll be able to figure out to some extent the importance, the relevance uh, of the myths and legends. So the debate continues. Uh, and as I have already stated, uh, myths and legends uh, must be understood as a continuous process uh, it is not a fixed story. It is not a final story that uh, we are talking about. And in that sense, Ramayana story continues. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now, uh, another question to Tharmasri, sir. Asked mm -hmm. by Sangamitra Sharma. Sir, okay. Buddhism emerged in India in 6th century BC. The epic Ramayana has written before the emergence of Buddhism. So how King Ravana can be imagined as a cultural hero of Buddhism in Sri Lanka? <laughs> it's it's uh, another myth. Uh, because you know, the, uh, according to our, our history, uh, written in uh, Maha, Maha, uh, Mahavansa, so uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, king uh, Ravana was not that time. So after the Mahavansa only uh, we can find the written uh, evidence of Sri Lankan culture. So uh, now the people uh, are rethinking. So previously, according to the Mahavansa, 
so people uh, it, it says that uh, Sri Lankans are uh, originated uh, from uh, King Vijaya. Uh, so you know King Vijaya, he might have come from the Orissa or somewhere, and he uh, came to Sri Lanka, and uh, most of them are uh, descent of the King uh, Vijaya. So uh, according to the new story, so uh, it is uh, uh, it's the same that. Uh, these people are coming from Ravana. At that time, there was a, a very good uh, uh, history and many people are there. So that is a controversial issue. So I think as uh, uh, Professor uh, Rani uh, said, that there should be uh, some uh, multi, uh, multi, uh, uh, multicultural, I mean that multi-level uh, 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 it's, 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 uh, uh, expertise uh, research required. So uh, one question was, uh, I, I would like to relate it to one question uh, came from the inbox. So it's saying that uh, recently uh, the Sri Lankan government has announced to uh, research about the Asian aviation technology uh, used by Ravana and so on. So that's true. Uh, then uh, uh, advertisement not published and uh, ask the public to submit if there are any evidence to uh, show what that's so this is uh, this was done by uh, the aviation because uh, we want to develop our tourism you know uh, every year uh, thousands of indians visit to sri lanka so this is a good uh, uh, source of income to sri lanka so we want to develop this thing so if we found some uh, evidence uh, or if we found some more uh, important uh, uh, facts or something like that for which related to the story so it will be much uh, help to uh, develop our tourism that's the thing thank you sir sir um, another question again to you sir yeah. one uh, sir, participants Manin Das has asked is your any materials remains are present of King Ravana the burning place of Ravana no, not at all. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but uh, if you allow me to show uh, you some another video clip is there. So I will show the, uh, the some people uh, according to the legends, uh, the people believe that uh, uh, King Ravana's body uh, keeping in the cave as a mummy. So if you're interesting, I can show it. So I don't know how it is that. Yeah. Am I allowed to show it? Yes, sir. Yeah, one minute, please. One minute. So, uh, can you see uh, some video? Can you no, see sir, this? Not, not yet, sir. One minute. Now, can you yes, see? Sir. Now, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it is coming. Yeah. Wait. Wait, I had to find. Right, uh, yes, I don't know whether you can uh, understand the voice. Now, this uh, this man is uh, going to see the place where the King Ravana's uh, body uh, was kept. Now, there is a place, it's called Petticola.
they're saying that there is a gate uh, where the cave is uh, located. So this is the mountain where the cave is located, but uh, no one can enter there. Yeah, uh, according to this story, uh, the King Ravana's and his brother Kumbhakarna's body were kept in that uh, mountain. Uh, so that is the uh, story. So you can see how no one can uh, go there because that is that mountain is very uh, far away from the place and it is difficult to reach the place. Thank you, sir. So can I take another question to you, sir? Yes, you're welcome. Sir, uh, Banasri Devi has asked, how can we project a scientific outlook of Ravana through archaeological evidence? After all, Dushashana was always considered as an exponent in science and was regarded as a voice scholar. Uh, kindly repeat it, madam. Sir, how can we project a scientific outlook of Ravana through archaeological evidence? After all, uh, Dashanana was always considered as an exponent in science and was regarded as a voice scholar. Yeah, uh, so as I told you earlier, uh, the, I, 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 before this presentation, I uh, discussed with several eminent archaeologists of Sri Lanka. So uh, I, I wanted to uh, know more facts about this story. And they categorically denied. There is no such archaeological evidence found in Sri Lanka yet. So that is their final decisions. So I think we need more uh, explorations to find the archaeology evidence if available. So that is the one thing. And also, uh, as I told you earlier, the multidisciplinary research required uh, to find these things, especially historians like you uh, also can uh, do some collaborative projects between Sri Lanka and uh, Assam. So we can do a very uh, good research to find uh, uh, the more uh, things which are related to the stories. Thank you, sir. Thank, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Our, our principal, ma'am, also has a query. Um, yeah. I request our principal, ma'am, to ask, sir, the question. Yeah, welcome. Really, but I got the answer already. But uh, uh, according to India, uh, Indian Ramayana, uh, Ravana is depicted uh, as a villain and uh, Rama the hero. Mm -hmm. and I want to know uh, is the Sri Lankan believe the same or reverse? Uh, good question, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, that is different, man. <laughs> that is the other side of Sri Lanka. <laughs> yeah, I, I told you about the appearance and uh, the things. Because uh, according to now, now you know, the now uh, new uh, TV series uh, is being uh, uh, 
telecasters. Accordingly, I put the TV series, the Ram, Ravana is the great. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Junali. Thank you, Principal Ma'am. And thank you, uh, Dr. Raisam Ma'am and the Professor Tharma Siri, sir. Uh, I think because of time constraints, we have to stop this uh, question answer session now and move on to the next uh, program, and that is uh, the Port of Thanks uh, by Junali Talukar, the Assistant Professor of the Department of History. Uh, over to you, Junali. Thank you. Namaskar. Now we are at the ending part of today's webinar. Respected Principal Ma'am, respected research persons, and respected participants of the webinar. On behalf of entire fraternity of Narangi Anjali Mahavidyalaya, I, Junali Dalukar, Assistant Professor, Department of History, would like to offer my thanks to our respected principal, Ma'am Rita Dutta Hazurika, for her overall parental guidance, inspirations, and advices. Thank you, Ma'am. Now I would like to offer my heartfelt gratitude to our honorable research person, Reina Lesram, Ma'am, Associate Professor, Department of History, Guwahati University, for her very resourceful, informative, and enlightened speech. All of our participants truly benefited by your very illuminating speech on myth and legends, folklore, traditional cultural history, or historical research. Thank you, ma'am. I really feel privileged to extend my special gratitude to our honorable research person, Lal Marvin Dharmasi Research, Senior Professor and Chair University of Kelaniya, Sri Lanka, for his very, very informative, interesting, and insightful speech, covering a huge, important topic for historical studies. Thank you, sir, for broadening and enlightening our knowledge, and thank you for giving the opportunity to hear you, sir. Now, my sincere thanks goes to our Mahavidalaya IPSC coordinator at HOD Department of Education, Rita Sharma, ma'am, for her constant support and encouragement. I thank our technical coordinator, Commissioner Kalita, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Geography, for his constant cooperation in making this webinar a success. I thank HOD Department of History, Pitimala Purwa, ma'am, for her overall effort in the organization of this webinar and making it successful. I thank Manisha Bhagavati and Parijan Purwa, Assistant Professor, Department of History, for their active cooperation. Last but not the least, I thank all the participants, faculty, research scholars, students, for their very valuable participation in making this webinar a grand success. Thank you all. Now I request our honorable principal ma'am to end up the winner and declare the meeting close. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Jonali. Thank you. I would like to thank, first of all, to our distinguished resource persons, Dr. Reina Leishram, and uh, Dr. Dharma Srisar for accepting our invitation and for very exciting presentation. We are very fortunate to have your speaks in this webinar. Thank you, organizer. Special thanks to Commissioner Kalita and uh, thank you, everyone. Now I announce this webinar is come to an end here. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Namaskar, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. It was really nice Thank hearing you. from you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir.